Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to kind of go back and rehash the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. Now I've done one video previously, if you guys are interested in seeing that, talking about moving away from one pistol I was carrying for EDC and moving to this one to see how well the new Gen 5s have done as far as a concealed carry pistol and some of the improvements and so on and so forth. I have a card for that at the end of this video if you guys are interested, but I wanted to come back and discuss this a little bit further in depth. Talk to you guys about what my experience has been. I've been carrying this for just short of a year and um, I, I will say that this is probably going to be one of my favorite Glocks. Not necessarily the favorite, but it has been one of my favorite Glocks. If you've been with the channel, you know I'm a Glock guy. Um, not to say that they're perfect, but I think that I have become accustomed to the Glock 19 and it's kind of my go-to. I guess kind of a security blanket. It's what I know. It's easy to shoot for me and um, I just kind of keep on going back to it. But before we get into the video any further, I just wanted to ask you guys, hey, have you signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter? If you haven't, I'd encourage you guys to do so. It's a great way for you to find out what's going on with the channel. It's another great way to find some training throughout the uh, United States from firearms instructors that I've either trained with or am looking to train with in the future. And finally, it's a great way to find some really good deals, especially on ammo. I'm always scouring the internet to find the best prices for you guys. I put them into my newsletter and send it out to you guys every single week. And it's a good way for you to kind of get rid of all the other junk mail. You can just look at this and hopefully find something that you're looking for. In addition to that, I do a giveaway every single month. So if you guys are interested, again, swing by fitandfire.com. Right on the homepage, you can sign up for the newsletter. Okay, so let's dive into this and talk about a lot of the things that I like about this. Uh, a couple of things that I am not a big fan of when it comes to this particular setup, and we'll go from there. First and foremost, again, this is the Gen 5, so um, this is going to have a few different improvements over the Gen 4. Naturally, it's been around for a few years, so I'm not going to do a deep dive into a lot of the um, nuances behind the improvements, but I will talk about the things that I have enjoyed with this pistol, carrying it over about the last year. Naturally, the things that I like to talk about when it comes to doing any type of review of a pistol is going to be the ergonomics, the sights, and then uh, the trigger as well. Those are the three things that I look at when um, diagnosing a pistol. If it's the first time ever I looked at that, uh, looked at any type of pistol, those are the three things that I'm going to take a look at first. And then we'll dive into um, its shootability, I guess, and also talk about the accuracy, because that's extremely important when it comes to an EDC pistol. I'll show you guys what I've been able to extract from this particular pistol. Okay, so let's get into the ergonomics first. Uh, first and foremost, with the Gen 5, they deleted the finger grooves here on the pistol grip, and that's something I actually really, really do like. It's actually end up being a callback to the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Glocks, and I'm glad they went that way. The finger grooves are cool, they're nice for some people, and when I first started carrying a Glock 19, I thought they were just fine as well, but as I got to doing IDPA shooting matches and three gun and stuff like that, I found that I just could never get my hand in the exact same spot each and every single time, and those finger grooves ended up really kind of hurting my hand. You know, it just really bugged me. It just, it was a distraction from making sure that my fundamentals were good to go when it came to this pistol. The next thing is down here, they've got a bit of a flare on the magwell, and that is nice. I don't think that there is any empirical data that I could provide to you guys that says that I'm, you know, 0.1 tenths of a second faster uh, than without it, but it's nice that it's there. It, uh, again, is kind of a security blanket measure to make sure that I am uh, getting my mags fed in easily and accurately. And then the other thing that I really do like is the grip texture on this. It is extremely aggressive, but it doesn't seem as if it's overly aggressive. I have wore 
this in the uh, appendix position for several hours, the majority of a day on a number of different uh, you know, road trips and have never felt uncomfortable with this uh, particular setup as far as the grip texture goes. And that pretty much covers it when it comes to the improvements that they've done with the Gen 5. Now let's talk about the ergonomics and its point and shoot ability. With me, the ability for me to shoot this is been something that I have learned to adapt myself to when it comes to the Glock pistols. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, look, you're not supposed to adapt yourself to the pistol. The pistol should adapt to you. And if it can't, you need to find something else. And I would fully agree with that. However, I started with Glocks. It's what I wanted to shoot from the get go. And I ended up forming myself to this grip angle. So when I present, I have my sights or dot right where I want it to be each and every single time. Maybe some fine tune adjustments right at the end, but pretty much exactly where I want it to be. And um, that may not work for a lot of people. And I completely understand that that grip angle is going to be pretty aggressive for a lot of people and you're going to have to rotate that wrist your shooting hand wrist into the pistol a little bit more than you would say like on a 1911 dear god i said that or an mp9 or a vp9 or some of the other pistols out on the market shoot even a cz p10c that's called foreshadowing <laughs> anyway, with that being said, I, again, have adapted myself to this pistol and feel very confident in my abilities to shoot this time and time again. First started with the Gen 4, now going to the Gen 5, and I, I don't have any problems with that. Let's talk about the trigger. Trigger is going to be a Glock trigger. You should expect exactly the same thing from the Gen 5 triggers as you would from the Gen 4. What I will say is with some of the internal upgrades to the trigger system, um, the striker safety and so on and so forth, they have been able to actually improve this trigger quite a little bit. All right, so let's talk about the trigger on this. The trigger is going to be exactly what you would expect from a Glock pistol. Now, I will say that this is actually going to be better than the Gen 4s or any of the previous generations uh, because of some of the upgrades or, or changes that they've done on the internals to make this a better trigger. And I would say that it's better, but it's still a Glock trigger. So let's take a look at what we've got going on with that. Right here, you've got your standard take up to get to your wall. It's a bit of a false wall with all the Glock triggers, but there is a pretty decent wall. And then you're going to have a little bit of creep in that trigger. And then it finally breaks over. You got about a millimeter, two millimeters worth of creep, and then it breaks over, defeating that striker safety. Here's your reset, loud audible tactile, as you would expect it. And then there's your break again. It is going to be bit of a creep. All right, so let's get into everything going on with the MOS. To my YouTube manual reviewer, this is exactly how it comes from the manufacturer. A red dot should be placed on this because it is a mounted optics system, MOS. So that is not an upgrade or a, a modification. It's exactly the way it should be. So let's get into that for you guys. <laughs> I have chose to put the Holosun 507C on here. Uh, it's a great red dot. We'll do an in-depth review on this um, because I want to compare it with another red dot that I'm currently using as well. But uh, I've really enjoyed it. There's nothing to say anything good, bad, or really indifferent about it. It's a red dot, it's strong, and it is going to do well for EDC. But with that, I have also put uh, Mariglow IDOT sights on here, so I can co-witness with that red dot. It ends up being kind of a lower one-third co-witness, and I haven't had really any issues with that. This is going to have a high-vis tritium field front dot with a blacked out rear, and that's exactly how I like my iron sights to be. So I uh, don't really have much distraction on that rear sight as I'm trying to either find my red dot or uh, find my front sight. I can immediately find that high-vis front sight 
that's the way I like to handle those types of things. A lot of people have complained about the MOS or the Glock plates on here. Uh, ran, you know, close to a thousand rounds, not quite, but close to a thousand rounds through this. Um, not only in zeroing my, uh, you know, personal defense ammunition, but also in just, just shooting and getting used to it. And I've had no problems with it. Just make sure that anytime that you do use any type of mounting, uh, you have index marks on your uh, screws, they're torqued down correctly, and you're uh, checking on those when you do PMCS on a regular basis. So that is really how we've got it all set up. I have a Surefire X300U on here, and I will say that uh, this is a great light. However, for EDC uh, appendix carry, this, this is a little much for me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're carrying at the three, four o'clock, you're not going to have a problem with it. But uh, painted carry, guys, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> needless to say, this has ran very, very well. I am using Hornady HST for my personal defense ammunition. I have chose that ammunition because, to be frankly honest with you, it was really what was available at the local shop and uh, I went ahead and grabbed some of those. It's gotten good reviews so I went ahead and, and uh, picked those up. The accuracy on what I was able to get from this pistol and that ammunition because there there is a combination between the two has been good. I've really really liked the fact that I was able to get right around an inch at 25 yards when I zero my red dot, it is going to be at 25 yards and I'm going to do it uh, offhand. I'm not going to put myself on a rest or anything like that. A lot of people may disagree with that technique, but if I'm going to zero my red dot, I want to make sure that I am doing it exactly how I would be shooting if I was going to try to aim at a 25 yard target. So that's how I do things. You can do it however you want, but that's just what I do. And I found that with the new barrel that Glock has put into the Gen 5s, the ammunition choice, my abilities to shoot, I was able to get really, really good accuracy from that. And I'm happy. I'm very, very happy with it. But with all that being said, we are going to move away from the Glock 19 as an EDC. I have a couple other pistols that I'm looking at right now. I am looking at the CZ P10C and possibly the CZ P07 as well. But first and foremost, I'm gonna look at the P10C because I'm familiar with striker fired pistols. Um, I wanna see what CZ has to offer when it comes to that pistol. I've already had it out to the range a few times. I've zeroed it in with the uh, optic of choice that I have on it and it's looking promising. Haven't had an opportunity to conceal carry it yet. Working on a holster, but we're going to do a full review on that, on my initial impressions of carrying it for a little bit, and then we are going to uh, do a comparison between the two uh, and see how that works out. So with that said, Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS, a workhorse. Uh, are there other pistols out there that are better? Sure, yeah, there definitely is. Are there uh, pistols out there that are probably more inexpensive, that can do the same thing, you know, kind of the just as good. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that statement too. But one of the things about Glock is, you know, it's sought after by a number of law enforcement and military uh, departments and, and units. Um, it's It's been around for quite some time, tried, true, and tested, um, not only on the streets with law enforcement, but in um, actual combat and stuff like that. So if that's something that you use to measure your personal firearms, that's a great way to look at it. Um, however, Glocks aren't for everybody. A lot of people don't like Glocks and that's perfectly fine too. If I was going to recommend a pistol for someone that I don't know, probably a Glock 19 would be my starting point. And then I would ask additional questions to find out other types of pistols that might suit them well also. So there you have it, Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS, great pistol. I've really enjoyed it and uh, unfortunately for me, uh, not necessarily unfortunately, but, but for me, I think it's time to kind of close the chapter on 
Glocks when it comes to a primary EDC pistol. And I say that because I am also testing right now the Glock 48 MOS and uh, going to compare that uh, with another pistol for my gym carry. Uh, that is kind of a secondary, smaller slimline pistol when I'm, you know, thrusting down for gym or whatever the case may be. So um, definitely going to look at it again in the future, do some more comparison videos in the future as well and uh, see how it goes. All right, that's pretty much going to cover it for this edition of Fit and Fire. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Sound off in the comment section down below. Is your EDC going to change in the future or are you going to stick with what you've been carrying for the past however long? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. Again, if you haven't already signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, please consider doing so. Uh, you can find that at fitandfire.com right on the homepage, and I'd really appreciate it and hope to see you guys there. With that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much as always. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.